Okay, guys, in a small way, I'm a couple days late on this news. However, yesterday during the Sun Celtics game, Adrian Wojnarowski of ESPN did some reporting on Grayson Allen and Royce O'Neal, and here's what he had to say. And Grayson Allen has had a career year for the Suns. Uh, he's leading the league in three-point field goal percentage. He's averaged 27 points over the last two games with Devin Booker out. Uh, he is later this month eligible uh, to sign a new four-year, $75 million contract extension mm. ahead of his free agency this summer. Uh, that would cost the Suns another 65 to $70 million in luxury tax. And along with Royce O'Neal, who they picked up at the trade deadline from Brooklyn, these are two players who the Suns cannot replace with anything but minimum players. If they were to lose them in free agency, it puts tremendous pressure on this organization to have to pay those players and keep them. And it's just an example of the complications ahead for an organization and a roster that right now is just a half game out of the play-in. And I was reading an article on Arizona Sports, which some of the article went on to say, which would cost the Suns an additional 65 to $70 million in luxury tax penalties based on the latest collective bargaining agreement. And then it goes on to say the Suns can give Allen more money than other teams in the market since they own his bird rights. The trade was made on September 27th, so the six-month barrier for Allen to sign a four-year extension is coming to an end. And here's the part where I'm a couple of days late on this news. The other day when the Phoenix Suns were announcing the 2027 NBA All-Star Game in Phoenix, Matt Ishbia talked about Grayson Allen and Royce O'Neal, and here's what he had to say. Obviously with the new CBA and the second tax apron implications, they make it a little bit harder for teams that want to spend a lot of money to do so from a roster building standpoint. I know you've always said, you know, I, I don't care what it costs. I'm just here to make the team better. We've got two significant free agents coming up. Do you foresee a similar approach to, you know, the way that you're going to approach this summer, especially with those implications of the second tax apron? Yeah, so I don't know what the second tax apron is. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> so the way I look at it is this. We're, we're trying to win. So I talked about four things. And uh, obviously, I know you're talking about Grayson and Royce, and we have other free agents as well. Um, but the way we're looking at it is we're trying to win the championship. And we're going to try this year, and then we're going to try to figure out how to do it next year. And, and signing free agents um, is what it's going to take. And, and having someone's bird rights gives you an advantage to be able to keep those players, even if they're into the luxury tax. And um, we're not frivolous with money and just spending money to spend money. What we're trying to do is win a championship and build the best team possible. And it's not just players, it's culture, it's team members. And Grayson and Royce, those are the two you're speaking of. Our two great guys, Royce is new to the organization, has done an amazing job. Everything you can think of, and Grayson's been here all year and has been a phenomenal part of the team and the organization. So we hope to and expect to have both those guys back, um, along with you know keeping this core team together because we love our team and we're going to go compete at the highest level, hopefully in the playoffs here very soon. Hopefully you can see them all play together. By the way, for anybody who cares, I don't know why I didn't talk about the 2027 NBA All-Star Game press conference and everything. It was just a busy week, and a one-man show here. Normally, I'm like on top of the NBA All-Star news, especially when it happens in Phoenix, but this one just kind of slipped by me. And I did talk about this last night during the live show with my friend John over at the Suns Jam Session podcast, and here's what we both had to say. And very soon, see them all to play together, and he's talking about Grayson Allen and Royce O'Neal. Now, I know everybody's like, oh, the second tax apron salary cap that I didn't care about earlier. No, Matt Eshbia doesn't give a fuck. He's going to pay these guys, and he absolutely needs to do it, especially Grace and Allen. That was a little small segment I wanted to go on. So just trust in Matt Ishbia, the front office. They're going to bring back Grace and Allen. They have to bring back Grace and Allen. I know that he had a bad game tonight, but this dude has been instrumental to what the Phoenix Suns have done this season. And if the 16 three-pointers in the last two games didn't prove that, I don't know what will. And Royce O'Neal, again, had a bad game tonight. But beyond that, he's been pretty damn fantastic this season. So when I heard that from Matt Ishby, I was like, damn, dude, I got to either go live and talk about that or do a quick video or do it right here because that, that's some big news in my personal opinion. And it's absolutely the right answer for the Phoenix Suns. This guy. Goes to 108, everybody. <laughs> All right, everyone up to 108, okay? Get the fuck off the court. All right.
Uh, absolutely. It's the right move for the Phoenix Suns, and it's the best way to develop and build this roster. They tried earlier this season to put young, prove-it guys out there around their big three. The K debates the ops, the Yuta Wantanabis, uh, the Chimetsi Metus, the Jordan Goodwins, the guys who they thought, hey, we put young, hungry, athletic, long guys out here. They're going to produce for our team. And they're going to be out there fighting because they want to get that next contract. So we're going to put them in a situation where they can be successful. Well, guess what? They weren't successful because of the tentative nature in which they were playing with. They were playing next to great superstars. So they weren't, and I've said this numerous times, they weren't playing to make the right play. They were playing to not make the wrong play. So they played scared. So Grayson Allen, you don't have that issue. Royce O'Neal, you don't have that issue. Those guys are confident in who they are and what their identity is in this league. So those are the type of guys that, James Jones realized halfway through the season, shit, I got to press, press reset. I'm moving forward. Hey, Ishbia, this is how we're going to have to build this roster out over the next three seasons is put confident players, veteran players uh, around our big three if we want to have any chance of being successful. And you're seeing that. And, yeah, Royce O'Neal had a bad game tonight, man, one of nine from the field, yeah. okay? But you look at the way that he stuffs the stat sheet outside of tonight – and he's his offensive rebounding, his defensive rebounding, his steals. I mean, he still had five rebounds, two assists, and he had a steal in this. Uh, and he and he was the be- he's a team best plus ten out there tonight, even though that doesn't really matter in the plus minus. So he he's he contributes night in and night out. And knowing that when everything's right in the world, he's coming off the bench. That's unbelievably huge because it unlocks not only a good second team unit, but it unlocks some very interesting roster combinations for this team at different stretches in the game. And he's somebody who you're confident in putting out there with your final five to close out games. So love that Matt Ishby is willing to invest in this team. The all-star game is coming here in 2027, which is another huge win for the Phoenix community. We might have our qualms over what the game is. That's the all-star game and the, the events around. And all. But when you bring that to your city, you're bringing money into the city. You're bringing positive things for your community. And that's what Ishbia cares about. He's decided to take this franchise and try to make Phoenix a, a pure destination. It's like we drafted the perfect fantasy owner. And, it, you know, it's just it's strange to go from somebody who is afraid to rub two nickels together because of friction, not alone lead a toxic culture within his, his uh, front office, to go to a guy who's just win after win after I like it's I can't even count all the things that Ishbia has done right, but this is another example of him going above and beyond and doing the thing that's in the best interest of not only the organization but the fan base as well. So it's easy to get behind this team uh, and know that this is a process. There, it's going to take time to get yeah. where we want to go. But man, great decision by Ishbia and a funny comment when he's like, "What's the sack saver?" And I don't even know. Yeah, exactly. And, like, another thing I love about Matt Ishbia, and I've said this so many times, I feel like it kind of gets overlooked. What he's doing for just sort of the the culture and the, the community of Phoenix as well. Like, I have a friend who works for Footprint Center, and she's met Matt Ishbia. You know what I mean? Like, it, the, the, the little changes he's even doing for just the employees of Footprint Center is, like, beyond what you, you know who. I'm not even going to say his name did. You know what I mean? It's just... Shout out to Matt Ishbia, man. Like, I know that fans love to criticize the KD and Beal trades. And and I know all these people are going to be coming out of the gates if things don't go our way this season. But it's year one. It's like I was saying earlier with the Kevin Durant thing. We're still, like, in year one or year two with this Kevin Durant big three, you know, change with this team. It's going to take time. And I remember when I was on our friends, the PHNX uh, podcast, it was me and Espo. We were talking. We were like, "This is a one. This is a two to three year window." You know what I mean? It's like we may not win the championship this year. Like, yeah, I want us to win. I believe we can win, but are we going to win? I don't know. But it's a two to three year window, and with the the little moves, like even just something as small as the Royce O'Neal move, little moves like that, Matt Ishbia can go into this off season and be like, "All right, we're going to tweak some things here, change some things up, and then bam, we're right back in it." So. It's like you said, like it, it takes time. We'll see what happens. And shout out to Matt Ishby, man. He deserves nothing but just 110% credit, all the flowers, all the praise in the world, because he literally saved our franchise. No, I totally agree. And just, oh, we needed it so bad. We needed it so bad. Uh, got another great question in the chat. Thank you to everybody who's watched along live, whether you're doing so on 
Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Uh, make sure you subscribe, rate, review on the Suns Geek channel and the Suns Jam Session YouTube channels. It's very it's the best way to support the podcast. So I want to hear you guys' thoughts, comments, and opinions down below. Do you guys think that the Phoenix Suns should bring back both Grayson Allen and Royce O'Neal? Any and all thoughts, put them down below in the comment section. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Brandon, a.k.a. Suns Geek, and if it has to deal with the Phoenix Suns, I'm going to make a video about it. Hulk smash that like button and please subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. Win or lose Phoenix Suns for life. And I'll see you guys next time. Go Suns. Suns Geek, appreciate it.